I think the best strategy for helping people get back to the community is helping them develop a, a network of support, you know, something uh, I think people are calling resource facilitation these days, but it's really developing that network of, of support and resources, you know, that they can, they can use to, uh, to sustain themselves. Because, you, you know, if you've had a serious TBI, you're probably going to have some difficulties throughout your life. You know, it's a chronic disease. I think the medical profession is starting to recognize that more explicitly, that this is, is a chronic condition. And, uh, and people are going to need some things throughout their life, and not just medically, you know, also in terms of their social adjustment. So, so you know, developing that network is very important. Uh, developing that network is also something that is not that easy. I mean, it really takes somebody, besides the person with brain injury, to be doing that. I think a lot of times that falls on the family, which uh, is, is is a little unfair. I mean, not all, not everybody's equipped to be a great. I mean, despite the the desire, you know, not everybody's equipped to be a great advocate or a great networker. I, I frankly would hate to be in this position myself because I'm kind of introverted. I think I do a horrible job, you know, even though I might want to. You know, really, I'm, if you know one of my family members were hurt, uh, I think I'd, I'd have a great deal of difficulty kind of doing the necessary networking and advocacy. So. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it takes somebody else, you know, and, and uh, unfortunately in our system, at least at this point, you know, th that's not a, a designated position for, you know, the, the resource facilitator is, is uh, if you, you know, it's not, it's not, a, not in the job codes.